We have the STEM program at Carter Junior High, Super Bowl of Caring, and the Eli Young Band next on Conversations. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Conversations. I'm your host Aisha Ramos. Carter Junior High School is the site of the first Science Corps program in the DFW area supported by General Motors Foundation and LULAC National Education Services Centers. The program uses an engaging, inquiry-based curriculum and encourages them to pursue courses that lead to STEM college degrees. STEM is an acronym for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math Education. STEM focuses on these areas together, not only because these skills and knowledge in each discipline are essential for student success, but also because these fields are deeply intertwined in the real world and in how students learn most effectively. Here's Principal Rennie Lazardo with more. I'm Rennie Lazardo, Principal at Carter Junior High, and today we were introducing um, the STEM program through the initiative sponsored by GM and LULAC. The program, the program exposes students to different areas of science, technology, engineering, and math that they wouldn't have had these chances in the past. Um, they get to experiment with uh, different products. They get to take trips into the GM plant. They send engineers and other scientists to come out and talk to them about the opportunities they have if studying through a STEM program. I'm uh, currently the STEM coordinator at Carter Junior High, and we are uh, right in the middle of our year, but uh, bringing in new students to join our program. Uh, it is STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, the science piece is a lot of hands-on labs with our kids. They love it. They're in charge of what they're doing in the classroom. We don't do much except just facilitate and make sure that everything is going smoothly. We also have a technology piece that we've built into uh, the program. Uh, we do the flipped classroom where students will watch a video or a PowerPoint before they come to uh, the STEM program in the afternoon. So they're prepared for the activities for the day. We are also um, tweeting every day. Uh, we have different teams built for video, still shots, uh, different uh, types of media, including YouTube. Um, the engineering piece is actually going to be run by uh, Mrs. Green, who has an engineering background. Uh, she's also an eighth grade science teacher here. She's going to be looking at our curriculum very closely and working um, on that. Uh, we'll be doing field trips to General Motors, and we'll also have different engineers that come out um, after school to talk to um, our students. The program is from 4 to 6 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're really excited about it. Um, and then we can't forget the math piece of the STEM, which is already built into the curriculum. So everything that they do um, involves data tables and graphs and things like that that they get to experience while they're doing their hands-on activities. So we're really excited about the new students that are coming in. We've had 12 so far this year, and it looks like we're going to have a full house with 24. My role in the STEM program is to um, provide some engineering support and to help Ms. Weltman with the activities um, that she is providing um, for the children after school. My background is civil engineering. I'm a licensed civil engineer and so I um, became an eighth grade science teacher and um, I'm really excited to be working with the STEM program and to be able to provide some of my um, background to um, the kids here at Carter. I'm a GM All-Star. I enjoy being part of the STEM program here at Carter Junior High because there's a lot of hands-on things and you're working with people and it also teaches you like a lot of teamwork. And um, in the future I see myself going further, being part of the STEM field. It's totally worth staying after school and being part of the STEM program. It's amazing. <laughs> so Luz Padilla Neiman, uh, an SME at the General Motors facility in Arlington, Texas. So happy to be here at Carter Junior High School uh, with our first middle school science corps uh, STEM program sponsored by the GM Foundation. Uh, so excited to see the students engaging in STEM activities and actually learning what STEM is at an early age. What we have found is that when we go into the high schools, so STEM has never really been introduced to a student. So for this year and the upcoming 2015 year, one of the GM STEM All-Star goals is to educate students at an early age, uh, expose them to STEM education and development. 
and to all the opportunities and professions that STEM offers to them. What I found uh, the most fun for the students is understanding that STEM cannot be boring. You know, that technology, applications, computers, that is technology, that is engineering. Uh, the science portion is just not in the medical field. You have opportunities to work in labs with food, with uh, vehicle emission systems. Uh, the engineering portion, we teach students about robotics and how they can actually use hands-on approaches in engineering. So we are really excited to expose students to see the opportunities that they may have as they continue to develop in STEM careers. Again, this is Renny Lazardo reporting from Carter Junior High. Thanks, Mr. Lazardo. These students at Carter Junior High completed a 30-week after-school program. That's a commitment. Way to go, Carter. Nichols Junior High School was this year's school for the kickoff for the Super Bowl of Caring that is held every year around the NFL Super Bowl. This event was a full-blown pep rally held at the main gym at Lamar High School, their future campus. These 7th and 8th graders collected $1,545 in donations for Mission Arlington. On hand at the Nichols Junior High-led pep rally were some Cowboys cheerleaders, Rowdy, the team mascot, and former wide receiver Drew Pearson, the original number 88, as he likes to say. The Super Bowl of Caring uses the energy of the Super Bowl to mobilize youth in a united national effort to care for people in their local communities who are hungry and those in need. More than 350 area schools and congregations organized events and conducted food drives which helped the North Texas Food Bank and the Tarrant Area Food Bank. Albertsons, Kroger, Market Street, and Tom Thumb stores encouraged their customers to buy prepackaged bags filled with non-perishable food items or make cash donations. That looked like a lot of fun. Our next story is about the winner of a special promotion that the Texas Rangers and the Eli Young Band held. One lucky DFW area high school would receive a free acoustic show by this country band. The promotion took place in conjunction with the second annual Capital One Bank Presents Eli Young Band's House Party, which was held at the Globe Life Park in Arlington. Martin High School was the winner. They had more students and supporters voting that their school was the best. The Eli Young Band played a private concert for the Martin High School students and faculty. And without further ado, here is the Eli Young Band. <laughs> It's our second year to play the house party, um, so um, we did a little contest on online, and we were willing to kind of go anywhere in the Metroplex, which we realized uh, we all live here and, and grew up here, so we know it has a pretty big area, and uh, I guess we really kind of lucked out that we're, I think, maybe the closest high school to the ballpark. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was a really cool thing. We uh, we had the students vote um, on, uh, I guess, uh, was it uh, a contest of who could get the most votes to get us here to their high school. So um, they get a free show. So we're going to play uh, a few of the songs um, from our records, some of the, some of the hits. Talk, talk a little bit about the show tomorrow. How excited are you guys for this? And, and you know, why was it something you wanted to bring back here to Arlington? This is one of, uh, this is our home turf. This is where we're from. This is, uh, you know, kind of a, a homecoming for us. We always feel like uh, getting to the holidays is kind of the, uh, the end game of the year for us where we uh, actually get a little bit of time off and so we always kind of feel like oh, it's going to be nice to, to go home at the end of the year and so um, starting to do the uh, the house party um, last year was kind of a celebration of that coming home um, after traveling around the world this year um, it's nice to be back in Texas and back home you know. We had the opportunity last year to go play a bunch of stadiums with Kenny Chesney on tour that was the best experience we've ever had touring 
Um, and so we had this wild idea, what if we tried to do our own? <laughs> and so the Rangers have been great to partner with and have uh, really made this all come together. And so it was a huge success last year. Uh, we really felt like we had zero complaints from a, from a fan you know, aspect of parking was easy, grabbing a cold beer was easy, you know. Um, the seats, you could sit, you could stand, it was a place you could bring your family to. It was really uh, bring, bring together everything that we like about a show and uh, getting to choose our own lineup and also getting to headline. All those things were just uh, so much fun for us. So we're really excited about that, the, the lineup tomorrow night and it's going to be hopefully top, uh, top last year. Baseball stadiums aren't typically venues where you see a lot of concerts like this. So what do you guys think of Globe Life Park as a concert venue? Well, we've, I, the thing is with Globe Life Park, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of games there, so um, we feel really comfortable there, um, and it kind of does feel like, you know, a house party for us, you know, so um, it, it seems an ex like it's, it's an appropriate place for us to throw this party. So. What we saw last year is, uh, like John was saying, the parking is great, there's easy access to everything, everyone gets a you know, a comfortable seat where they can come up front and stand and hang out with us by the stage. Um, also, the acoustics are great, too. I mean, it's hard to find an arena or a stadium where you can actually have some really great acoustics, and we've got the PA set up so that any seat in the house is going to be great uh, audio-wise, but also visually, too. Uh, they, they talked about, uh, well, you guys have been everywhere. I mean, you guys were in Japan or something, mm -hmm. right? You, mm -hmm. What has the last month been like? The last three months have been uh, probably the craziest we've been um, in our whole career. Um, we're a little tired, <laughs> a little jet lagged. We were in Japan for about five days, which it, it was right at the point where you get used to the complete change in uh, the clock. You know, it's it's a like 14 hour mm -hmm. difference between here and Japan, and so um, we we actually went to Japan to play for our troops, and so um, you know we're a little tired. But, you know, I think uh, you get to, to the house party, that's kind of been the light at the end of the tunnel after uh, kind of all this hard work. So. I mean, a lot's happened to you guys since the, the last one, obviously. New album, that's been doing great. The new single's been doing great. I mean, what, what, is, what is, from last year at this time to this year at this time, what's that been like? What's the ride been like? It's been huge. We've been on a bunch of tours, it feels like. Uh, we're, we're a band that never stops touring. We started out the year with Darius Rucker. Uh, went over to Australia with Toby Keith. We were out with Jayco all summer and then also doing our own tour with Jägermeister and then Japan. So this has been one of the busiest years we've ever had, but been very fulfilling. Uh, but it's funny, everything feels like it's leading up till uh, tomorrow night. That's kind of like the end of finals week where you can actually go out and celebrate. That's what tomorrow <laughs> night feels like. And we're all buddies and so it's like getting on stage with a bunch of our friends. And, and that's kind of the atmosphere we wanted to create is, you know, just going out and making music with our buddies, and, and everybody has a great time. So. Yeah, it looks like the weather's going to be good, which is always the one thing we're crossing our fingers about <laughs> uh, doing it this time of year. Weather's going to be good. Maddie and Tay opening up. They're going to be huge. They've got a top 10 single now, uh, new two, two wonderful young ladies. Uh, Cody Johnson, great Texas act. Pat Green, everybody knows Pat Green. Gary Allen, you kidding me? We're both playing before us, which just blows me away. And then we get to close it all up, so it's going to be a great night. And we're going to play some of, uh, for, for some of the fans that – um, have known us for you know the 14 years that we've been a band. Um, we kind of did a contest on our, our website of uh, them voting for some of those older so older songs that we hadn't played and some of them in four or five years. And so um, we're going to be pl playing some of those older tunes to kind of bring back some of that uh, that old stuff when we used to play you know, Adair Saloon and the R Bar in Denton and those places. And so. Um, it's going to be a really fun show to play, you know, some of the newer stuff, the newer hits, as well as uh, some of those staples that we used to play night after night um, in the DFW area. So. Thanks, so. Thanks y'all. Appreciate, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All good. What we'd like to do is make a presentation to Miss Roddy for uh, for all of your hard work on the boats. Oh yeah. Also, uh, on behalf of the band and myself, we're going to double whatever that is, so... A warrior.
Hi, I'm Luke DeFilippis with James Bowie High School. Today what you're about to see is a student-run social experiment on the power of positivity. What can a small group of students do to affect major change on a campus? Um, over the, ca uh, the past couple weeks, we've been planning meticulously what we're going to do and keeping a big secret underneath the hashtag, we are U15. And what it means is that whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, you as a human and I are bonded in those experiences. We tend to feel that we need to suffer in silence. We go throughout our days without ever hearing the words that we want to hear most. You're beautiful, you're loved, you're smart, we care about you. And today is the day that we became the voice for those students. If no one else is going to say it to them, then my students will. We met before the first lunch in order to organize and team up and then in waves we sent groups between 8 and 10. There were seven different stages all with times that the students were following. Um, they were instructed not to speak. By not speaking it, it made the students want to know more about what the social experiment is about and it allowed them to formulate their own opinions of the event instead of them regurgitating information that the participants let them know. Throughout the lunch more and more students joined and it was this beautiful crescendo that ended in a grand finale of all of my students with all of their messages and all of their voices walking back through the area that they had just left but this time breaking silence and giving as many genuine compliments as humanly possible something that's difficult for people to do to compliment and to be genuine about those compliments I saw people crying I saw um, random people coming up to me and my students telling them thank you for what you've done. Just really, really overwhelmed with positive feelings. The goal is that we track this and um, through Twitter and other social media and see the effectivity of the campaign. And if one, one teacher's classes can enact this much positive change on a campus, then I challenge you all to do the exact same thing. Your kids deserve it. As a participant of the uh, social experiment, I feel like it was very, it was very helpful to the, to the students because me telling people that I've never even spoken to that they're beautiful or hey I like your shoes, I like your shirt, you can see it in their face that, that nobody said that to them today or that they have not had that experience and because of that they don't know that you know somebody else is feeling the same thing I'm feeling or hey somebody does like this shirt because you never know their situation, you never know what's going on in their home life or even at school, people get bullied all the time and nobody knows it. So with that, I feel like this was a awesome way to show that you're not the only one going through something and you have people, your human brother and sister here with you to help you and anytime you need it, you know you have it just from being at school. How do you feel after you've started Facebooking the hashtag WeAreU15? The uh, first two weeks that we started on this, uh, it was very, very slow. People kept asking and uh, we eventually put, kept putting smiley faces all over the place. And uh, when, this, um, when we first started A Lunch, uh, we started going around with these uh, posters and everyone started to like them. Then they started looking up the hashtag and people started liking them and we got uh, 2,000 likes on Twitter, uh, increasing. Instagram, I think we have around the same amount. And Facebook, we have 1,643. The hashtag, we are you, got pretty famous. This is only first lunch. We're actually aiming for like everyone to join this group. When we're doing this, we're doing this for the people that have hurt times, people that have lost someone, or people that just get put down. Uh, those people get raised up today. Those people do a lot of things that no one recognizes that we're recognizing here today. Uh, if you see this type of stuff happening, like people, just give them a smile, give them a thank you, give them a, you're, you're looking good today. Everything we do here today is exactly what we want. And this is the hashtag, we are you, like it. Well, that does it for this show. I'm Aisha Ramos, and I hope to see you again right here on Conversations.